What's up, kids? Today we are back in the garage working on Danny Bonaducci. Um, in the typical fashion of the Matrix, I looked and looked for one of these Super LSDs before we left so I could get that other diff set up. So I had showed you that diff set up, just was the open diff. Um, anyway, I literally said to Jessica as we were driving away on our trip, one of those diffs is going to show up either while we're on our trip or like when we get back or whatever and it showed up seriously like the second day we were back so i went and bought uh the super diff from this old dude who was building a uh, sort of rat rod kind of i don't really see a rat rod it, was, it sounded like it was a triumph uh sunbeam tiger hybrid kind of thing or whatever but felt tight i'm gonna put this in there I bought a little kit to make it a little bit tighter I guess these are kind of prone to known to not be super grippy but I don't know it's kind of a toss right <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we'll break into this today and I'll show you how we can use that limited slip in a 8 inch truck and or forerunner diff uh, this isn't my trick this is like old old school Toyota lore and I'll link that down there or whatever. But uh, yeah, so we'll just break into this real quick and we'll go from there. Okay, so we'll just show you this is limited slip, obviously. Otherwise, we would be having this other flange turn. So what I'm gonna do is I just kinda wanna put a bar in here and see what, what the torque is, how hard it is to pull that away. All right, this is like a two foot bar or something, I suppose. So I'm not one super hard to get that to break loose so you can see what we're talking about it's not real tight and it's supposed to be more limited than slip is the whole point of this right so what we did is went online and kind of surprisingly there isn't it didn't look like there was a ton of stuff out there but there is this company we are performance and basically what they do is they send you a set of shims here I don't know what they call that. It's like a conical spring washer and a spacer. And so what we'll do today is we're gonna open up the diff and show you what's going on inside of the limited slip. It looks basically the same as the open, you know, obviously as the open carrier, it's a little bit differently internally. So we're gonna take this out, get it disassembled, and um, show you how to put a clutch style limited slip in your forerunner or pickup if you wanna do that style. I don't know the history on this. I assume it's good. Like it says, it clutches good. It doesn't look like it's totally rotten. So I've never taken one of these apart, but I have, uh, you know, taken a front mini truck diff apart. Typically, these are going to just pop out of here. We'll see how easy that goes. And then, uh, so both of these have to come out like your axle shafts and pull the cover off. I'll have to pry the diff out. So, yeah, something like that. Both look good. Doot, doot, doot. That's the other one. So, this came out easy. Okay, so here's just a quick little look at the actual carrier carrier differential, right? So you can see the cases. This is a little bit wider. They look kind of generally similar, right? <clears throat> and they are assembled very similarly as well. So what I'm gonna do is, and is good practice when you're tearing down any diff, um, is to make some sort of match mark with the cap so you don't get them mixed up. These are like cast in the machine, so they're side specific. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a punch mark here. And you could mark the ceiling surface right here, I guess. And this is a throwaway kind of to me, so it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna put the punch mark out here so I don't mar up the ceiling surface. And then we will pull those cap bolts off. And we will pull that diff out of there.
right, so <clears throat> the diff came out, of course, while I had the camera off, or it was a GoPro error or whatever. Um, user error again, so that's what she looks like. I'm going to go ahead and get the ring gear bolts off, get the ring gear off, and then uh, we'll get this guy opened up. Okay, the ring gear is off here now. I'm going to go ahead and take out the eight bolts to hold the two carrier pieces together, the differential carrier, differential carrier, differential carrier pieces together. Shit. That's not how I wanted that to go. So <clears throat> that's loaded in there with a little bit of spring pressure. You want to reach in there and grab a hold of that side gear with your finger. I'm going to come out of there like that. And that'll leave you with the half right here. This is your center clutching springy thingy. All right, this is the piece that's going to get replaced in the kit. Okay, so a quick little tidbit here, it looks like. The magazine, or their directions talk about an extra thrust washer that goes in there against the case. And you can see, you see that thatch mark on that right there? Okay, so the very first one that comes out of there has got two different markings on it, right? So their paperwork said that it would be marked with a letter. I don't see that, but anyway, that one looks like that. It will go in there your actual clutch pack. You can see this one. Can you see it? It's the same on both sides. So, that's how that piles up. One. Spring. ring pinions come out all right there are locator dowels on that they match up with those see those you see those. And this is the other half of the spring mechanism here. So these pieces go together. Of course, down inside the other spring pack, so that will fall out the same way. You can read that. So basically what it says to achieve maximum locking LSD, glass bead, the black, blah, 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 the black phosphate coating off of the stationary tab. So like I said, that first tab that I showed you, we'll see if we can get all that off of there and then we will make these lock up thicker. You can see that's what that says. Right this is the assembly. That's that first case shim piece that we talked about with the two different sides coating on there and that one's the piece that will go down first so what's going on right here is we're checking backlash in the spider gears we have this set up basically just holding the spider gear down here and we can see we're shooting for like five thou so that's a little bit much right there what do we got there like 25 thou almost and that's where the shim kit comes in so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the fattest shim, which is a 15 thousandths. We'll pull the pack out, we'll reshim it, and we'll try again. So 
So, like I said, we'll take this fat shim that we have, which is the 15, and just put it on there. That's where it goes. So here's just a pick. This one makes more sense. That's the adjusting shim that we just added right here. Not into that side or into the other side, but it goes at the bottom. And then your packs all stack up like that. So we'll put this back together again here and try it again. Okay, so here's how you go ahead and set this up. Go ahead and set this up. You want to get your dial indicator like this. You want to assemble your the stock spring center pin in here. And what that will do is hold the carrier gear down. And then you can uh, just put weight on it. And that is just to like this, put some weight on it. Make sure it's not interfering with the gear. That gets us about in the five thou range where we want to be. So this is shimmed up with twenty thousandths on this side, <clears throat> and now we'll go back through and do the other side. All right. Here's what these guys look like before we scratch all the black phosphate stuff off there. All right. Here they are after we clean them up. All right. So again, the way these assemble. These go in there, you just want to line all the ears up like that. Stack it in there like that. Obviously not enough. That's our fiver. Swap that guy out for the eight. I had to play with shimming that up a little bit. Uh, a little bit more so I ended up having 20 thousandths in the one side and I've got 23 thousandths in the other side I put a 15 and a 5 and a 15 and an 8 in there so this is the assembly that replaces the uh, that center spring washer over here okay we have two like washers like this so they will assemble on this guy like this here right like that picture shows there this is getting replaced by this so that's going to up the spring rate and it'll keep the limited slip from disengaging spiders go on there convex this one will go in concave collar Then this guy will go back on top. It's on there like that. Okay. So at that point. Sides are assembled. I need to put 
some assembly glue in there. Oops. Just gonna use some assembly lube to lube everything up and put it back together. Okay, so just a quick recap of what I did here. Um, setting up the, well, like I showed you how to get the pre, that preload set up, and it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of tricky, it didn't agree with anything else. Anyway, that ended up with giving me about four thousandths of pinion, carrier pinion preload per side, and now the breakaway is actually quite a bit higher, so let me show you that here real quick. Okay, so, like I said, it's kind of an unscientific method to do the breakaway. But you saw what effort it took before that. So, and again, it turns out I didn't get those questions super duper clean. Cleaned off, they'll wear off. But here's what the breakaway looks like now. That's very tight, very, very tight. It was nice and it was breaking loose before easily, so um, I like that. <clears throat> We're gonna call that it. We're done with the limited slip part of this, and we have to get it into that other differential. So we'll show you that here coming up. Here are the two carriers side by side. You can see that the ring gear flange height is a little bit different here. So on the website where we get this information, gearinstalls.com. This is this dude Zook. He's been doing this stuff for a long time. Basically, said so you want to swap this. What you can see, this bearing race is a little bit thinner than this one, and what that will do is allow us to use the adjusters to push it over a little bit to compensate for that there. So I'm going to get this ring gear off, the bearing swapped out, and then we'll start going back together. Okay, so just to go ahead and show these. This is the one I just took out of the truck. These are the same. Okay. The great thing about Toyota is they don't change every part for every single car, right? So dumb. So anyway, get this cleaned up. We get it ready to go back on this other diff here. Okay, so just for the sake of conversation, what I ended up doing was I had to swap both of the carrier bearings. That other one was just ended up sticking out a little too far on the other side. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and get the backlash set back up in this spot here. And retorque everything down and then this diff will actually be done for reals this time. If you want to see how that carrier bearing preload goes and getting that differential the rest of the way set up, please check out this other video here where we talked about it previously. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Peace.